Hello and welcome to this Wednesday edition of Rocky Top Rundown, your home for all things Tennessee athletics. I'm Allie Seaton alongside Michael Marks, and we're here to give you the midweek scoop on the Vols. Thanks, Allie. After a dominant performance on Saturday, the Vols are now ranked number seven in the nation, heading into week three's matchup against the Kent State Golden Flashes. That's right, Michael. The Vols are definitely showing out and very deserving of that number seven spot, and I'd say Tennessee fans would have to agree. I got the chance to, to hear what students are expecting from this team after two huge wins. The Tennessee Volunteers are now 2-0 after an emphatic victory over NC State on Saturday. The Vols have absolutely showcased their dominance, putting up over 50 points in back-to-back -back games. Although we're still early in the season, many fans have high expectations for the team moving forward. I'm on Penn Walk right now to hear how students are feeling about the first two games. I think this is the best Tennessee team in my entire life. Um, I think we're better than 2022. I think this is the best team we've had since maybe 98 or 2001. So uh, I'm feeling very good. I feel like the Vols have been doing really well. I think that we uh, really crushed with the last two games. Um, I think that our pick six at the uh, NC State game was really what won it for us because it really gave us that crucial momentum that we needed to win. Feeling great. I'm feeling really good, especially after NC State. They right. did a really good job. Yeah, are we like number seven now? Or yeah, yeah. Looking good. Looking really good. I think the squad's deep. I think the culture runs strong. I don't think anyone's going to test the Vols soon, man. We got Kent State coming up. I'm not nervous. Weren't they like ranked pretty well, NC yeah. State, and then we beat them by like a lot? By a lot. So. Something that surprised me, maybe Nico Swagger. He's like. He's tough. Easy playoff lock for sure. Nico for Eisman. Absolutely incredible. Nico, Nico's looking good. He gets the job done. He's got aura. I think the quarterback's doing a really good job. Nico. He's got long braids. He's you know he's handsome. Nico looked really good against Chattanooga. He looked fine against NC State. Believe it or not, former Alabama head coach Nick Saban said that Tennessee is going to be a hard team to beat in the SEC. I got the students' perspectives on that statement as well. I think hell just froze over. <laughs> uh, I, I agree. I mean, Saban's the best coach there's ever been at the college football level. Uh, he knows more than I do about football. So if he says that, I have a lot of faith in what he has to say about Tennessee football. I think he's right. I think we're going to be tough to beat. <laughs> it's great to hear. Yeah. Saban, uh, he can shut his mouth, bro. I don't want to hear anything from that dude. We're going to kill Alabama. He's lucky he left this early. Oh, dude. my God. He's so right. lucky he left this Puerto Rico again. Alabama. So there's that, yeah. I think that we'll go out, we'll beat Alabama here. I think that we're going to kick uh, Oklahoma off their field in a couple weeks. I think it's going to be a, a great season, dominant season. It's safe to say that these students, along with many others, are excited for what's to come as the balls aren't showing any signs of slowing down. For Rocky Top Rundown, I'm Brandon Goggins. Fans can't wait to see how the rest of the season plays out, and after these two games, neither can I. The Vols look to move on to 3-0 on Saturday night against Kent State in Neyland Stadium. Back to you guys. Thanks, Brandon. Michael, after hearing what the fans had to say, what's your score prediction for this weekend's game? I think we're finally going to get that ever so coveted shutout. I think I'm going to go with Tennessee 61, Kent State 0, and evolves a lot of momentum heading in the week after. Hey, I'm very excited to hear that confidence. I'm going to say about 65-3. to 3, I think they might get a field goal in there. We've got more than just football to talk about today as both the men's and women's golf teams played in tournaments over the weekend. The University of Tennessee golf teams made a splash at the Visit Knoxville Collegiate and Cougar Classic tournaments this past weekend. At Visit Knoxville Collegiate, the men's team finished strong with a total score of 836, four under par, landing them in a tie for third place out of 16 teams. The team posted rounds of 277, 273, and 286 throughout the tournament. The top performer for the Volunteers was senior Lance Simpson, who finished in a tie for third place with an impressive 204, which is six under par. Other highlights included freshman Jackson Harrington, who finished tied for eighth place with a total of 206, four under par. A third Tennessee player also finished in the top 25. Pierce Lewin came in tied for 25th with a 211, one over par. Bruce Murphy and Evan Wisley reed both tied for 33rd with scores of 214, four over par. At the Cougars Classic, the Lady Vols were led by junior Bailey Davis, playing two under par. The Lady Vols within the tournament tied for ninth with the University of Maryland. Overall, the men's team has a fall record of 12-2-1 and one, and an SEC record of 1-2-1. and one. They look to build on this success as they head into the spring season. Rocky Top Rundowns Will Oleg attended the Visit Knoxville Collegiate Men's Tournament over the weekend to follow freshman Phenom Jackson Harrington. Will? Hey guys, from the U.S. Amateur Championship to a historic win in one of Tennessee's oldest golf tournaments, the freshman superstar had quite the summer. 
The Visit Knoxville Collegiate Open was played at the beautiful Tennessee National Golf Course starting last Friday and highlighted the first tournament for the Vols' new season. Freshman Jackson Harrington looked dialed in throughout his first collegiate appearance, looking nothing like a freshman out there. While finishing tied for 8th place at 4 under par was not the main goal for the number 3 overall golf recruit in the state of Tennessee, Harrington's 5 under 65 in the first round Friday was a true showing of his talent. He was able to come up clutch with a few long putts and huge chip shots around the green to keep himself out of trouble throughout the day. Harrington is no stranger to playing good golf in big spots as he battled through two famous tournaments this past summer. Harrington participated in the 75th Tennessee State Open as one of the only few amateur contestants from July 9th through July 11th. At his hometown Greystone Golf Club, Harrington overcame a four-shot deficit earlier in the day, including being down three with four holes remaining, and became the first junior golfer to claim the title and the youngest winner in the event's storied history. Harrington said about this win, This is definitely the biggest win of my career. I have finished second a lot this year, and I was kind of tired of losing. I like to think that I hate losing more than I love winning. I was always trending in the right direction, but I'm glad to finally get it done. The lefty's summer of history did not end there as he qualified for the 124th U.S. Amateur Championship in Minnesota in mid-August. Harrington started off the match play well in the first round during the round of 64, shooting a one-under par and highlighting his day with a hole-in-one which was the first made at the tournament since 2018. He would fall to the eventual winner of the tournament in the round of 32, but this historic hole-in-one made viral rounds and built even more buzz for Harrington's incoming freshman campaign. With all the young talent around Tennessee athletics right now, you better learn the name Jackson Harrington before it's too late. Harrington and the Vols finished tied for third overall in the tournament with a total score of four under par, trailing behind winner LSU and runner-up Ole Miss. I, for one, am very excited to see the development of Jackson Harrington in his time as a golfer at Tennessee. Back to you guys. Thanks, Will. You can catch Jackson Harrington and the men's team teeing off on September 21st at the Valero Texas Collegiate Tournament. Turning now to the Lady Vols volleyball team who played host to the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky last night. The Lady Vols started with impressive intensity and battled hard in the first set to maintain their momentum. They took control of each set to secure the victory in the end. Graduate student Nina Kajic continuing to play a key role keeping the Lady Vols pace high, contributing 17 kills, 13 digs and 5 blocks, securing her first double-double of the season. Freshman Peyton Chapman also made an outstanding contribution, finishing the night with 15 kills and 5 blocks, proving her hard work and impact on the team this season. Junior Kiki Granberry continues to dominate with a career high of 11 blocks, showcasing her immensely strong defensive skill set, solidifying her role as a key player. Tennessee fought a tough match, ultimately securing the victory, bringing home a 3-2 win over Western Kentucky. The team's effort was highlighted with 67 kills, 57 digs, and 15 blocks, leading them to a victorious finish. The Lady Vols are still on the move. You can catch them this Saturday and Sunday at Coastal Carolina for a double header with matches at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The 2024 NFL season officially kicked off on a Thursday night in a game that included VFL Trey Smith. How did he and the other former Vols fare in the first week of NFL action? Let's pass it on over to Seth Reynolds for the rundown. Across 23 teams, 35 former volunteers found themselves on an NFL roster to start the 2024 season. From veteran volunteers to rookies looking to make their professional debut, the Vols are slowly but surely taking the league by storm. For the Week 1's rundown on the standout players, here's everything you need to know about the VFLs in the NFL. On Thursday night, two-time Super Bowl champion offensive lineman Trey Smith played all 54 offensive snaps for the Kansas City Chiefs in their 27-20 victory over the Baltimore Ravens. Starting his 11th season in the NFL on Sunday, Running back Cordero Patterson had 13 yards on four carries for the Pittsburgh Steelers in their 18-10 victory over his former team, the Atlanta Falcons. The Bears took down the Titans by a score of 24-17 in a matchup that saw three VFLs on the field for Chicago. Defensive edge Daryl Taylor recorded seven solo tackles, including two sacks, as well as forcing a fumble. Offensive lineman Darnell Wright played all 56 offensive snaps, while Swiss Army Knife Valus Jones Jr. rushed twice for 11 yards and hauled in his only target for 8 yards. VFL Gerard Mayo made his head coaching debut, leading the Patriots to a 16-10 victory over the Bengals. The Patriots roster includes two former Vols, with quarterback Joe Milton III on the active roster and offensive guard Jerome Carvin on the practice squad. 
Defensive back Elante Taylor absolutely lit up the stat sheet with three sacks and a deflected pass for the Saints and their demoralizing 47-10 victory over the Panthers. On the offense, Pro Bowl running back Alvin Kamara rushed for 83 yards and a touchdown on 15 attempts and hauled in five out of five receptions for another 27 yards. Quarterback Josh Dobbs is reunited with Super Bowl star wide receiver Jawan Jennings on the San Francisco 49ers this offseason. On Monday night, Jennings led the 49ers with five catches on as many targets for a total of 64 yards in their 32-10 victory over the New York Jets. And with that, the NFL moves forward to Week 2, where the Vols continue to make their presence felt. For Rocky Top Rundown, I'm Seth Reynolds. We certainly wish all of the Vols in the NFL the best of luck in the 2024 season. That's all the time we have for today's Rocky Top Rundown. Be sure to join us next week for the rundown and all the weekend action. Until then, I'm Allie Seaton. And I'm Michael Marks. Thanks for watching, and as always, Go, Go Vols! Vols.